In this video, we're going to continue on. This is part two of it, where we have all of these interactive. And if we open up our mobile design, which is the most important one, as this site is really focused mobile first, if you put in here, let's say 10, you can see now the values are starting to increase here. And if we do 100, as you can see, the chart starts to increase and the smartphone value increases as well based on that. So this is extremely fun because now we create a more interactive part of our chart having a item here where we have an input and this input will respond directly with our chart so i hope you're excited to start to learn this and let's start and explore how to create this on click event all right so now it's time to continue on and if you haven't followed along with the previous video this is part two of the bar where we create a on click event and then that will instantly affect the chart JS. But if you are not, or if you haven't seen this video yet, where we build this, where we build this, please check part one before you continue on with this. All right. So what we're going to do here is now we're going to create the the item here. We're going to create a new section, and this section will be basically the voting part. So we say here a new section, and this section will be the vote div. So we say div. There is a class. We can say here vote box and this vote box will vote specifically on a specific item so in our case imagine this we want to um, add a value on the smartphone here so we want to have on the third value you want to vote for that we want to click on an input a value and then, and then this will be changing based on the value we have here so let's start and explore this so the vote box so in here basically we have an input with a button that's what we're going to do here so we say here input and this input will be a type of number and this one has an id and this id will be smartphone meaning that that's the one we're going to to vote for and here it is a value as well we can put in a value whatever the value is and of course a class or well we can remove the class no need for this here and the next what we want is a button and this button is basically our confirmation button so we say here class or id confirm and this button here we will start to give it a color as well and uh, extras so we say here confirm or vote smartphone you can make this uh, without p that's fine all right so we have this here now so once we save this of course you will see here this looks absolutely hideous but don't worry about it we're going to work on this now so now what we're going to do here is immediately we'll start to work on this part so we say here this was a class of vote box remember with capital B am I correct here yes make sure you pay attention to these capitalized letters because they will not respond if it's not capitalized the other is so we have here the vote box we say here the first very simple with 100 pixels for 100 percent and then what we want to do here in the vote box is we will say that this is display all right so sorry there was a quick disturbance but this will be display and this will be flex so we have a vote box and display flex so what happened then is we can put these items here aligned to each other and then we can say here justified content center and align items center as well so we have this here refresh there you are so now what we can do is you can do some padding and margin here to make this look more appropriate so the vote box should have a default padding of let's say 10 pixels so 10 pixels everywhere there you are all right so the next item will be a input or basically it's the input itself let's go down here what's the input name input with the id well we can just say vote box input that will be more than enough so we say vote box input input and then in here we are having the following we're going to put in here let's say here a padding as well of 
10 pixels and then we will say uh, border and then we say border color now what we can say here is one pixel and then we say variable that's the color one and then we say here border solid of course this must be solid there we are and then the next one will be of course the vote box button so in the button of the vote box very similar we just can copy all of this oh except for border i will say here background color background and probably i think we can do a border as well and if you want to be very fancy we can add up another color for border let's make this number two all right so we have these colors already we had to set those so there we are so we have this here that looks well it could be slightly better i think we can put in a margin and padding maybe a margin would be nice and let's make here the color white there we are all right so that's fine and then maybe here border radius border radius four pixels same here and then we can do here probably a margin i think we can do here a five pixel margin same here save this all right so that would be not that nice for this one i guess not necessary if we have already here simple vote of a vote um, probably here what we can do is a width we say here width let's say width will be uh, 40 percent here that's more than sufficient and the reason why we can do 40 percent is simply this because this is just only a number input although we can put the number we will say text align right and the reason why right that would be more nicer because then you can see we have the numbers here all right so we've got all of this we make it just very quickly and it looks decent now so let's go down here and work on the most important one so we have here this and now we need to have all the javascript matching with that to do that we need to have a new function and this function will basically be the uh vote so uh, let's say vote smartphone function and this vote smartphone function has no parameter because we will extract the value or the, or, or the number from the input remember we have the input here the input number or the value from this will be extracted from here that is the smartphone id and then we have the confirm id will confirm when we click on it. so when we click on this we will trigger this function here so the first thing what i want to do here is first to make the function and then we connect them together so let's start here so we have the vote smartphone all right and then what we're going to do here is basically this we're going to get the data from my chart data data sets and then data and then basically here we want to pinpoint only this one so we're going to adjust this value here all right so let's look at that let's copy this my chart dot and then we have data dot data sets then here zero and then dot then we're going to get the data so remember this is an array all right so if you've seen other videos that talk about this in this case here the index is number two because we want the second or the last uh, index or last element which is the third element which is considered the second index all right so we're going to put this in here so we say here data dot two and then here equal and then the value of it so where can we find the value well basically we will have the value and that would be the input item here so we're going to get this one smartphone then we say here what we have to do is first we have to make a constant this constant will be named smartphone so we say the value equals smartphone so now uh value equals smartphone dot value all right because we're going to get the value of the id here so in this constant we will say here document dot get element by id and then we have here the smartphone all right so once we have this this is all correct and now we have all of this 
So we say here and then we get the value of smartphone. So whatever the value would be in the input here will be shown here. Once we did this, we still need to here we say my chart dot update to update the new adjustments. All right, so we got this, but we're not done here. And the reason why we're not done here, we need to still trigger it. So the moment we click on the confirm button with the ID of confirm, then we need to trigger the function and the function will be vote smartphone. So that's what we have to do now. So what we're going to do here is we say confirm. We're going to get this and then we create a new constant here. So let's put in your name, confirm uh, event button. All right, so we're going to do this. Confirm event button to trigger, to trigger the function. So we say confirm, confirm equals, and then we say here the following. We say here, document dot get element by ID. Again, the ID, why? Because we have to confirm. So we're going to get that. All right, once we did this, what do we want to do? Well, basically, you want to do this. And this is very important. We say here again, confirm, because now confirm is a variable, which basically says this. So once we once we do this, and then we want to connect it to a event listener. So what is an event listener? An event listener will connect a button or something with an event. Depending on the event, you can specify that. Then it will start to trigger a a function so let me show you so we say event at event listener and this event listener is click so we have here the click and then what do we do here so very important so the moment we click on it what we want to do is we want to trigger this function here remember the click is a string value that's why quotations but the function itself here is a variable this is why it doesn't need any quotations all right so once we do this so basically once we first we connect to make sure that html and javascript understand that this button in html has a, uh, has a connection with javascript and then we create a connection by clicking on it and if it clicks on it it will trigger this function and this function will do this all right so i hope this makes all sense should be very clear all right so once we have this, now we should be done. Let's refresh here and let's look. Okay, we have our item here. We have the windows and then we say here, we want to vote 10 points or vote smartphone. We click on this and there you are. You can see now the smartphone value changes, adjusts. Of course, when you click on this and you do this again, you can see it adjusts here as well. It goes up or down depending on the value here. And of course, we don't have any database where we store it. So the values here are not being stored as of now but this is here a way how you can increase the voting part of every item here and this is very fun with a bank app if you can imagine how we can start to add up new values payments uh, withdrawals and add-ups and well that'll be one of another videos in the near future however this is really really useful all right so we have this now and maybe you say well this is fun but look it doesn't make any sense when you vote on something it should not it should not decline the value or adjust the value completely. Let's say if you put in one vote here, you just want to add up. And now right now it just sets it as a solid one vote. That is correct. How can we adjust this? Well, basically we can do the following. You can say this. We have the smartphone value. And then what we do is we just get this value here. And then we say just plus to add up this together and then if you save this what happens now is that when you have this value whatever this would be let's say this is three number three plus whatever we insert equals the new value all right refresh here and let's say here now we have plus one and it goes up let's double check if this is really correct because it doesn't look like it's going up immediately that amount we say here three jumps up Let's look at this to double check if we are really having the right item here. So what we can do is console.log. What we're going to do is we're going to just add up these here together. Save this, refresh, and then double check here. So let's say here one, then we click on this. 
we have this all right what we need to do is here we need to do a plus value so we need to get this value plus the other one because right now what happens is it will consider it as a attachment because it sees it as a string so what we need to do is we need to convert this into a variable all right so we're going to do some adjustments here because i realized that this is might be confusing what happens is it it calculates itself and then it creates probably somewhere a confusion so what we need to do here is the following we can just say this is the new value so we say here this constant is new of, let's say say uh, smartphone vote equals those here and then here we're going to parse it so we say here parse in so to make sure that this is all considered as a value and it understands that this is also a number and not a string all right so we have the parse in here so what we're going to do now is we're going to just double check here if this is now correct so we're going to get this and here i just comment this out let's save this and double check here now all right let's put in one it's four four all right so you can see here and if we do this that is all right so now it starts to get the right item here of course what is happening now is it will get the specific value here and then it starts to put in here so that means that it will not loop but that's all right for now this is the most important one that we need to have so let's go back here go in here we can save this now and then we say here this here will be the new data of what exactly remove that and we get here the smartphone phone vote save this refresh and let's double check here now if you say one all right and if you say another one there we are so now it starts to loop it because here in the console it did not so now we have this and this is exactly what we want so if we change here and then we say here 10 we keep on adding up as you can see here and that is how it works so if we do zero here what happened nothing happens if we would do minus one then as you can see here now it's oh, it starts to decline i just think i just pressed something wrong but this is let's say minus 100 what happened there you are all right so this is basically now a far more interactive version and this is really really fun because now let's try some more what we have here now for these three items we could basically do here with three of those different items and then we have here three different items to confirm we have the smartphone we have the other item etc etc so with this you can learn a lot more and i hope you enjoyed this one it was a slightly tricky one but first i'll make a new video going more in detail and going deeper in this where we have these three items all together we will put them in there so if you have any questions going to this, put them in the comment section below. Now make sure I'll get back to you. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you enjoy it. And if you enjoy this video, you probably will enjoy this one as well. And if you're interested in Chart.js, check out in the description box the link directing to my Chart.js course where you can learn everything about Chart.js. And finally, of course, make sure you subscribe to my channel.